Welcome back to On the Clock right here on Forward Progress. I'm Rob Pizzola, and today I'm putting myself in the shoes of Steelers general manager Omar Khan. Once again, the rules here are very simple. I'm going to use Pro Football Focus's mock draft simulator, default settings. I'm drafting the top three rounds in this year's draft, and I'm doing it as if I was making the pick. This isn't what I think is going to happen and what the Steelers are going to do. I'm drafting as if I am the GM, and I'm a big believer in drafting for value, not necessarily drafting for positional need. I'll try to explain my process through every single pick, though, as well. You guys let me know how I did down in the comments below. And of course, if you're looking to bet the NFL draft, or the NFL for that matter, make sure you check out Pinnacle Sportsbook, one of the world's sharpest sportsbook available to bettors in Canada. Use code HAMMER to sign up if doing so, and you won't regret it. Pinnacle, one of the greatest sportsbooks out there. You must be 19+, plus, not available in the U.S., and as always, please play responsibly. We're going to bring up the Pro Football Focus board here. Steelers drafting at number 20. Last year, they took Broderick Jones in the first round. Joey Porter Jr. in the second round. We're going to enter the draft room right now. And again, the Steelers are not a team that I would put a lot of consideration into trading up. They need a lot of help at receiver. They need a lot of help on the offensive line. They could use an, use an additional corner. And really, they're lacking a lot of depth across the organization. So I don't want to give up the 20 and potentially the 51 or future draft picks in order to get the Steelers a little bit further ahead. So we're going to let this draft run all the way to number 20, and then we're going to see what we have here for Pittsburgh. All right, here we are at pick number 20, and there's a lot of options for the Steelers at this point. Uh, Cooper, G Cooper DeGene, excuse me, Pro Football Focus has him ranked as the eighth best player in the entire draft. He's likely not going to go top 10, in fact, I think this is just fine positional value for him. I could see him anywhere from 15 to 25 or so. Byron Murphy is very interesting because this is someone who could easily go top 15, sitting waiting for us there at number 20, but doesn't fill a positional need for us right now. So do we continue to bolster the D-line when we have so many other holes to fill? That's interesting. This is challenging because if we go down a little bit further, we do have corners available to us. Nate Wiggins will probably go... Uh, very much around the time of Cooper DeGene, even though he's ranked a little bit lower here by Pro Football Focus. We have Jackson Powers Johnson, who we drafted for the Dallas Cowboys at 24 in our last mock draft. Even someone like Brian Thomas, who's all the way down there at 27 for the Steelers, would actually be an option here at 20. Uh, this is a, a loaded wide receiver draft, and sometimes you're going to see some of these you know, second-tier receivers drop a little bit further down the board. That could have potentially been really big receivers in previous drafts. I do want to explore the trade options here for Pittsburgh. Wouldn't mind moving down. And it looks like the Cowboys are willing to move up in this spot. Um, and we'd only be moving down to 24, where we'd still have options available to us. So let's go 20, 24, and let's try to get the 56 from the Cowboys. A 9% chance. We'll offer that trade. If they reject it, we'll sweeten the pie a little bit and throw in something like 178 for us. And we'll try that again. And there we go. So we're giving up a late round pick. We get the 56, which will really help in terms of depth for the org. We drop four spots. Let's see who goes here between 20 and 23. So it ended up being Tyler Guyton, Tackle, Graham Barton, Nate Wiggins, and then I butcher the name all the time, Jerzan Newton of Illinois. And now we have two great options available to us. So I do think Byron Murphy is the more coveted prospect. Um, and let's analyze Byron Murphy, whose grades across the board are fantastic. Uh, gifted D-lineman, strength, speed, versatile, three-down player. Not deep in terms of pass rush moves. Guess who can help out with that organization? Two of the best pass rush rushers on the planet, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith. So this is certainly a possibility here. Uh, Cooper DeGene will take a look really quickly as well. And okay, so... Essentially, there's been a lot of debate about what he can play, which cornerback position he can play. And the reality is he can do anything. He could do outside. He could do slot corner. He could be converted to a safety. He does not play a lot of press coverage, which is one of the issues with the Steelers. They do like to go pretty heavy man. It's not the best fit on the planet, but you have like a 1A and 1B option here, in my opinion, between Cooper DeGene and Byron Murphy, both who could go pretty much in the same range. This is a better positional fit for the Steelers. So we will go ahead. We'll take the corner at pick number 24 here, and we'll lock it in. Pick number 51 here. 
and we're going to have some intriguing options. We got 51. We're coming up on 56 soon as well, and then 84 and 98. Um, so lots of moves that we can make. Zach Frazier has fallen. Uh, we're picking 51. I don't expect Zach Frazier to really be available at 51 in real life. It would probably be in less than 5% of drafts. Bo Nix is on the board here as well. And that would be kind of a free fall for him, considered a late first round, early second round prospect. I'm seeing those two names and they stand out to me as absurdly good positional value or draft value, I should say, at the 51. Now, the Steelers went out and got Russell Wilson. They got Justin Fields. So do we want to go with someone like Bo Nix, who's already 24 years old, would develop behind Justin Fields in all likelihood, and maybe gets a shot to start when he's 26 or 27? I'm not sure that the Steelers want to do that or that I would want to do that after they brought in a few guys at the position. Now, I'm not a Russell Wilson fan. I do think Fields has potential in an Arthur Smith offense. Let's take a quick look at Zach Frazier here at center and take a look at his analysis across the board. Frazier's background and build give him a high floor as a scheme versatile center who's worthy of an early day two pick. And again, we're doing mid day two here as well. Uh, a lot to like about him. A very smart player. I, I think this is a Tomlin type of player personally overall. Good athlete, high IQ, exactly what they want in that org. So we're going to forego Bo, Bo Nix here, even though he's fallen in the draft. And Zach Frazier is going to be the pick for us, the center out of West Virginia at number 51. Okay, now Bo Nix still available at 56. There's two trade offers. I want to take a look at those really quickly to see if it's a team right behind us. It's not. The Raiders want to come up from 77, presumably to draft Bo Nix. So we're not going to take a trade offer. Uh, if we look down this board, there's lots of intriguing options that are available to us here. Ricky Pearsall would be actually a great fit, uh, more of like a, a Julian Edelman type of receiver. If we click into him really quickly, he can play the slot, has a lot of speed, versatile. Uh, again, you know, Russell Wilson wants to get the ball out of his hands quickly. This might be the type of guy to do so. So that's definitely an option here. It's about improving the roster right away versus potentially getting a starting caliber cornerback at number 56 down the line. And that's a real, real challenge for me right now to put myself in this position because you got multiple good players here. I do think down the road, 84, 98, we could address some other positional needs potentially. But at this point, I think Bo Nix has just fallen too much. And yeah, he would be QB3, but there's a realistic shot that neither Russell Wilson or Justin Fields works out. You give Bo Nix maybe a year or two more to, de to develop. Uh, I don't love the age, but we're still going to go with it. And again, Bo Nix could also fetch value on the trade market in the regular season down the road or whatever. So it's not a complete lost cause. Uh, we're going Bo Nix out of Oregon. All right, we've got two picks remaining here for the Steelers, number 84 and number 98. Johnny Wilson on the board here and Gabriel Murphy right behind him, even Bucky Irving. These are three guys that I think Pro Football Focus um, has a little bit overvalued relative to the market. Like Johnny Wilson could go in this range, but he's more likely going to be around pick 100. Gabriel Murphy, I don't think is going in the top 100. Uh, maybe not Bucky Irving either. Uh, when we did the Cowboys draft, we did draft Trey Benson here. I'm not so keen on running back for the Steelers right now. Jalen Warren has emerged as a, a, a solid running back, especially in this Arthur Smith uh, wide zone type of run concept that they might go with. Now, Cameron Kitchens at safety doesn't fill an immediate need, but is very strong value, I think. Uh, you could see him go inside the top 70 in the NFL draft. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. might go inside the top 75 as well. So we have options available to us here. Um, even if we scroll a little bit further down, Cedric Van Pran. Okay, now this is really interesting because Cedric Van Pran, and we, we've already drafted O-line here in this draft, but he can he can really block in like man schemes uh, and those duo schemes that a lot of teams run. If we click his analysis, I think he's been docked a lot for his zone blocking. Um, yeah, definitely has. He's a man gap heavy scheme type of guy. Arthur Smith has changed schemes from Tennessee to Atlanta. He's the type of guy that puts his offensive lineman in the best position to block, generally speaking. So this would be an option for us. We did that draft Zach Frazier. So I'm not super keen on going this route again as well. The first standout to me, 
even though doesn't fill a position of need is Cam Kinchins. Let's take a quick look at him out of Miami, Florida. Obviously, we have Minka Fitzpatrick, Deshaun Elliott, but I'm looking for good athletes at the safety position, good ball skills. Comes down with interceptions, anticipates throws. Actually reminds me of Minka Fitzpatrick quite a bit. They did have issues at safety last year. Some soft tissue itch- issues for Minka Fitzpatrick. I don't see anyone that I love here that fills a positional need. And I think this is a pretty solid value pick at this point in the draft. Uh, so we're going to do that at number 84. We're going to go with Cameron Kinchins, Miami, Florida, safety. Pick number 98 here. Jeremiah Trotter still on the board. And, and again, I'm aware that the Steelers brought in Patrick Queen. They, they don't need a linebacker. But Trotter's a solid player. At 98, probably not going to be available on the board in real life. There's no trade offers available to us here. So we have to draft. Uh, we're going to dismiss Michael Pratt. We already t- taken a, cor- a quarterback. Kalen Bullock would have been a good option had we not just got with, gone with Kinchins at safety. Um, Jerry and Jones, this is way too high for Jerry and Jones. Uh, keep scrolling down here. Let's see if we find anyone that's of a very solid value. Not really anyone that's standing out as... I mean, DJ James is, if we take a look at DJ James out of Auburn, he's probably going in the top 100, almost certainly. Um, his position grade is fall, like he's just fallen, basically, free fall. But if we look at his analysis, pretty versatile guy. Uh, not going to end up being a cornerback one by any stretch of the imagination, but someone that definitely we could add to the mix for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I just feel that right now, Trotter is by far the best value on the board. And again, doesn't necessarily fill a a need, but like, look at the Eagles from two years ago that just brought in a million edge rushers and rotated them in and out and had a lot of success doing that. I think at this point in the draft, we look for guys with high upside that could potentially fill starting positions down the road. Let's click into Jeremiah Trotter Jr. really quickly out of Clemson, but two back-to-back unreal years. He can rush the passer. He can cover as a linebacker, plays good run defense as well. His size deficiency is a problem, but he's willing to be physical at all times. That's like a Tomlin characteristic. Uh, I I see a lot of stuff here that I think is a good fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers going forward. So uh, we're going to go with it and take Jeremiah Trotter Jr. here at number 98. And PFF will analyze the draft here for us. Um, Didn't like the Cam Kinchins pick at all, which... I, I don't blame them. It doesn't fit a positional need. They're not super high on him. Uh, but I think that's good value for him at 84. So we got a, a center. We got ourselves another starting corner. Uh, and then basically, best player available in the other three picks. Um, and we went with Bo Nix, Cameron Kinchins, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Looking back on it, I will say they're grading our draft as an A+. I, I think this was a solid draft. I would have liked to to grab a wide receiver or a tackle for the Steelers. It just didn't manifest itself. We would have had to reach, probably had to trade up and give away assets at one point or another. So I know some Steelers fans might be disappointed that you don't get the wide receiver because that's that's a struggling wide receiver core with Van Jefferson as your number two there right now. You don't get your starting tackle. Uh, Dan Moore at left tackle is basically a turnstile. So those are still areas that are going to be addressed in the future. But overall, I think good positional value in this draft. And uh, I'd be happy with it. Just certainly don't think it's an A+. But let me know how you think I did with the Pittsburgh Steelers down below. Let me know what you'd like to see me do next here in this series, as I do plan on getting around to as many of these NFL teams as possible. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button down below. Make sure you're subbed here on Forward Progress for more NFL content leading up to the draft.